but they're grinning. It seems we're living out our dreams. This is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. The 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee is the best and most original new musical of the season. We are very pleased to have two of the men who created it with us, and here to introduce them, my co-host, Michael Riedel of the New York Post. I second Susan's endorsement of this show. It's absolutely delightful. It has just opened at the Circle in the Square on Broadway for what I think will be a very, very long run, and I am happy tonight to have with us the composer and lyricist of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, William Finn. Welcome to Theater Talk. Lovely to be here. And his longtime collaborator and director, James Lapine, both making their first appearance on this show. That's right. Welcome. Virgins. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, darling. Um, all right, Bill. Uh, this is a show about um, um, eccentric uh, high school students who have a particular uh, uh, talent for spelling. Um, you're one of Broadway's um, more lovable eccentric characters. Do you have a natural affinity for these kids? Yeah, I... I... <laughs> <laughs> when I first got interested in the show, mm -hmm. uh, I was <clears throat> most interested in how these kids were were right on the brink of adulthood and how adult how adulthood was going to whack them in the ass. But actually, as 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 I've worked on the show, what I find most touching about the whole thing is not that adulthood is so horrible for them, not that they're going to lose and be buffeted by all all these horrors, but rather that during adulthood these misfits are going to be able to find friends for the first time and, and, and <laughs> achieve a sort of normalcy that, that they have not felt for, for their whole lives. And what I find so lovable about, that's a sickening word, what I find so <laughs> lovable about this show is, is that <laughs> they, um, during this, these m misfits realize that, that these are the people they're going to be with for, for the rest of their lives, and, and there's a sort of respect achieved, mm. and they're no longer misfits. So. Is, is it so much adulthood, uh, James, that's whacking them on the head? Isn't it their adolescence that's whacking them on the head? I mean, they seem to be isolated and alone from the rest of the kids in the I high school. most adolescents feel like outsiders, even when you're sort of successful as being an adolescent. I think deep down inside you feel kind of like you don't belong, and your body's in going mm -hmm. through all these wild shifts which I think make you feel like a little bit of a monster. One of the things I admire about the, just the tone that you've struck in the show is that <clears throat> it would be easy and frankly cheap to kind of um, make fun of these mm -hmm. kids. And, and this show never does that. Was this something that you were very careful about? I mean, you don't want the audience really to be well, laughing we certain, at them. We never, we knew that we just couldn't do that. that yeah. That's not the way we felt about the characters. And that wasn't the sort of show we were, we were intending to write. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That That was... That was a, a cheap satire, mm -hmm. sketchy sort of thing, and, and uh, we were trying to write. But it's still easy to fall into caricature if you're not careful. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you just so. had to be aware of it. And you rein the actors in from. Uh, we have the actors coming on right after you uh, talk about this bit. But you sort of rein them in from falling into caricature. Just watch. Well, that. I don't know that I rein them in, but I certainly <laughs> tried to personalize what they were doing rather than, you know, with any kind of role, you try to kind of see what you can excavate from the actor. You know. What was what was this work when when you came to it? You came to it first, right, Bill? That, so so he, this property existed before it you was came an, on board. It was an improvised piece that was done downtown by a bunch of actors called the Farm, mm -hmm. and it they were just riffing kind of on spelling bees, and and that's that's what they did. That that was the piece. There was. It, there was brilliance in the piece, but there there wasn't a story. Right. There was no development. There was no character development. There was no, no music, story right? development. They had some songs. They had some songs from Guys and Dolls interpolated <laughs> into the thing. They had some. They had some on new music in it. But it was it was just a, it was a totally and, totally different. And did the actors that you continue to use from the farm have those characters? Oh yes. Yes, I mean oh, Dan yes. Fogler was William Barfay already, and That's yeah, and, they, and then you took this and shaped it. Though he was only Barfi at the Barfie. time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, then you came and and and. Yeah. yeah. What did I? What I? Yeah, yes. Uh, well, one, well, just one second. We we did two productions <sighs> right. at the Barrington Stage Company mm -hmm. in in Sheffield, Massachusetts. And then James. Then James. And James. And, and, and transformed a lot of it. I mean, you know, it, it was a very successful So you wrote a score in a book. 
For the, no, I did not write the book. Rachel Schenken wrote the wonderful Schenken book. The wonderful book. Yeah. And then you came and... And then I came. Uh, well, what did I do? I don't know. I was, I've never done this before. I was able to see a show before I directed it, which is an oh, excellent way to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I like to do that every time <laughs> now. Just, you know, somebody mount it, I'll come in and then... Uh, hmm. I've actually always sort of uh, fantasized about doing that, so it was great to have that opportunity because it's so much easier. Because you're sitting back from it, they're all so close to it, they've been working on it for months and months, and I could just sit back and kind of go, oh, well, this works, this doesn't work, I think. Yeah. It was great fun because it's such a young cast. And, and they're so delightful. They're yeah. delightful, and it was great. You know, I like working with kids. The nice thing is I can bring what I've learned the hard way to them, and it was, it was fun to kind of see them be as good as they could possibly be. Now, uh, this is, a, if I'm not mistaken, a, it's sort of a different kind of a show for you because most of the shows you've written in the past have come right from you. I mean, total expression of who you are, falsettos, falsetto land, new well, brain. Well, falsettos, the, the events of my life are, are not the events of that show. But <laughs> exactly right. I mean, you've been sort of brought brought into something that already has existed. Have you enjoyed that the way James has enjoyed taking I've, over the direction? <clears throat> I've, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. Why? Is it in a different... Well, working with... First of all, I, I've never really worked with a book writer the way I worked with Rachel Schenken on this because we were in the same room writing writing the thing all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it was... So it's not all up to you. It, it was not all up to me. <laughs> and when I got stuck, I would say, Rachel, do something. You know? <laughs> um, Help me. Um, which is... Often what I what I say to Lapine and and one of his his one of the great of many gifts is his his fertility with ideas. Uh, he he doesn't run out of them. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? What about no 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 no. What about this? What about this? Just ongoing and and it's it's just a, that's one of the, the the most valuable things I find yeah, about I mean, working with apart from the, the the talent, the ability to stage and like to reconceive and things like that. I, I, I don't want to go on about it. Well, I'm interested, though, in, in, in this collaboration. I mean, this is one of the great, great collaborations in the theater, really. I mean, mm -hmm. What was your first show together? Well, March of the Falsettos. March, March of the Falsettos. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And uh, did you guys hit it off from the beginning? How did you find this uh, wonderful, talented, yeah, colorful he, he character? Didn't, he didn't want to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> True. Kind of true. Why? 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 I didn't, we didn't really know each other. We, yeah, were in the we same didn't know building, each other at all. And I thought he was crazy as a loon. He was sort of stalking me a little bit, but not stalking, but if, if, well, not stalking, but you were sort of in, I don't know, I never directed a musical. I barely directed anything. I saw table settings. The, uh, Andre well, Bishop play, said yeah. you have to go see, he wonderful wrote, play he wrote did, yeah. pardon me, table settings and directed it. And I saw it and I, I said, this is directed just like a musical. Mm. He said, well, yeah, that's why I wanted you to see it. And and, um, and you pursued him. I guess I did. I was the suitor. Uh, <laughs> why did you give in? I have no idea. This is a long time ago. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know, actually, because it's nice because to be wanted. Because I was very you know? charming. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he was so convinced that I could do this thing, which I'd never done. I thought, well, if he feels I can do it, I'll do it. And... Uh, I was just dumb, frankly, mm. dumb and kind of, I wasn't thinking of having a career in the theater at the time. It was just kind of a fluke. So, right. And it was fun because there really was a... There was no um, pressure. And there was also like, just like half a show maybe, right? And there was a, a dollar and a half to spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of and the we great events. And we were working events, with Michael, yeah. Michael Sterevin, you know, the did, three of us together. Did you know his work before? Or did, or, no, you, I mean, never do you remember when he starts playing songs for you and you must have heard something there oh, but, that you had? And the, you know, the way I play songs, oh, yeah, especially the ones songs? I'm working on. Well, when I, I now can play them pretty I now finish songs. But when I, I was, when I would preview the songs for James, I, I was basically going, switching pages and, and no, over <laughs> here and, and doing this. And I, I, I don't play. Great, the best of circumstances. So I sometimes I would teach them to Michael Starab and he'd play them for me, and, and it would be. You know, it was such successful. a different time because we were at Playwrights Horizons. At that point, they did maybe ten productions just in the little space, and probably right. you know right. several downstairs. It wasn't so precious, you know. Yeah. We just got together in a room. We had some songs. We did some casting. We just got to know each other. It was like and we put, putting on a show, yeah. you know. It wasn't like 
anyone was carving out a career. Right, and now you're Tony Award winners, and uh, so much is expected of you when exactly, you meet. Exactly, exactly. It's hard Less to do fun. It quietly. Well, also there's that press breathing down everybody's neck. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what it is though. Also, you're, for me, the frame of reference was so narrow because I was not from the theater. I didn't go to the theater that much. So, I you know now I've seen so much, know so much. It's a little harder to be as free because you're so going. Yeah, oh. all, all the joy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's <laughs> <truth>. <laughs> no. But there's still, you, you still seem, though, to have, get great um, joy out of your collaboration together. I mean, you enjoy working with this guy, as you well, said. Well, yeah. And how do you, do you beat a song out of him? I mean, you just sit on well, top he, until he's you He's relentless. Sometimes I he's, am he's a very relentless. annoying. I am he's annoying. very, <laughs> very annoying. You know, he's saying, oh, it's great. He has so many ideas. But there's also a downside to that, too. Cause Which it is? Just, you never stop. It's yeah. just never finished. Yeah. Nothing's ever finished because there's always another idea. Which which drives even myself crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. You know, that is the, it's not always a great thing. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say I beat it out of you, but I no, certainly, but he's just an, he, I'm he's, insistent. He's insistent. Yeah. I mean, he's annoying. Do you clash? Do you disagree? Do you don't see eye to eye on a lot of the stuff? Yeah, that sure. Or you yeah, but that you, but I, I get, you know, when I have to write something and I don't know how to solve the problem, I get a little despondent. But you don't want to work with somebody you don't have clashes with, yeah. I think. And there are things that we argued about, and Bill was right, you know, you, that's sort of how you find out. Yeah. what you, you have to serve the writer always Well, as it the took director. a while. You know, James was catching up. Rachel and I knew the show much better than Spelling, he did, yeah. and he needed, he needed, he would, didn't want us in rehearsals for the, for a lot of it, because he needed to catch up. He needed to know the show as well. Mm. Also, you need, if there are things I don't like, I need to have them justified to me why they should be there, which helps me do my job. If I'm mm. directing a song that I don't feel serves the show, or an actor's moment, or this or that, and they say, no, no, it's got to be there, and you say, why, and they tell you why, then you know, oh, okay, mm -hmm. now I can go back and make it happen can for Can you the ever show. go to him and say, I don't like this bit of direction that you put in the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you yeah. do. Well, I just look a little sour. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> a little quizzical. Maybe. Like, oh, I, I think you, oh. Yeah. And you know. <laughs> oh, no. Well, so, you know, the nice thing about the theater is often I just don't listen to you. And then if you hear <laughs> the same thing, you know, th that's a danger, too. You get used to things that your initial response was, I don't like that. And yeah. then you just get used to it. But it's, you need the collaboration. I think it's what makes the work work. Well, know? we've got the cast coming on next. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, explaining your, your particular collaboration. <laughs> uh, Bill Finn, James Lapine, uh, the writer, uh, composer, and lyricist, I should say, and director of Spelling. Great. It's great to be here. Good wow. to see you. Please come back anytime. Great. When you've got a new show cooking. <laughs> Is there anything in the works we should know about? No. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I love my dictionary, and I love the indented border. Every word's in alphabetical order. Ergo, lost things always can be found. I really enjoyed the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, now at Circle in the Square. It has a terrific cast, and I'm very happy tonight to be joined by three of them. Welcome to Celia Keenan-Bolger, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, and Dan Folger. Thanks for being our guest tonight on Theater Talk. Uh, all right, you, all three of you play um, slightly eccentric um, young kids <laughs> who have entered this uh, Spelling Bee. Can you uh, each give me uh, an assessment of your character and uh, what your character is... Um, what his little grotesque or misfit aspect of his personality <laughs> is, Jesse. Uh, I play Leaf Coney Bear, uh -huh. homeschooled, hippie child, one of, I think, eight kids. Um, third alternate, second alternate from his school, so he's sort of surprised that he's even there. He's uh, just coasting along, and he keeps getting another wave of good luck, and he kind of can't believe his fortune getting as far as he is. And... Um, he kind of goes into the strange trance when he spells. We, I, I'm not really sure what that means. It's funny. Uh, so but yeah. this, but his, his, his talent for spelling is, it sort of does come out of nowhere. I mean, mm -hmm. he's blundering around. He's been around. told his whole life that he's not smart, and uh, he's, he's uh, not good at anything, really. And he sort of finds his, this talent for spelling, and 
realizes that he's, he's, he's okay. And, mm -hmm. As you're putting this character together, and I'm going to ask you all this mm -hmm. question too, so pay attention. <laughs> um, do you decide that, you know, this particular talent for spelling comes from somewhere in him? Why does he have this strange knack to do it? I don't think he has a passion for it necessarily. I think it's something that just he got pulled into, and he, I have no idea He's why. He's like he, an idiot savant. This yeah, one. yeah. I, I think it's he 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 sort of coasts through life. He's one of so many kids. I, I think he just sort of got plopped into the spelling bee, and he's finding a passion for it as he's doing it. Um, I think he finds the whole thing humorous at first, and um, then takes a turn and realizes this is something he's good at. Yeah. And Celia, your character is? My character is Olive Ostrovsky, and she's sort of the, um, the quiet, insecure, we all knew her in middle school, um, with the absent parents. That This is sort of the um, a, a crux of my character, is that um, no one is at the B to support me. Um, and I or think, pay your, your <laughs> or pay my entrance fee yes. for that matter. <laughs> um, so, and what's so amazing, just listening to Jesse, is that you do essentially have all of these outsiders, all of these kids who I think, in their normal school setting, are the kids that are the outsiders. And then we all come and, and meet in this place, and there is this new sort of sense of belonging, um, and that we all kind of find secret solace. Mm -hmm. um, in each other. And your love of spelling comes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from um, just the love of words and wordplay mm -hmm. in the dictionary. And you and get the sense that this is a girl who's sort of up in her room with her dictionary and that's yes. her life. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's just also that need that because she's very independent because her parents are sort of absent from the picture, <clears throat> that there is a lot of time spent, it, there's a lot of solitary time and that she does, you know, so she, she loves this dictionary and um, and there's, of course, I think probably, as far as being in the spelling bee, that idea that if she wins, that maybe she'll get a little bit more attention from mm -hmm. her parents. So that sort of, I think, plays into the whole, that event, the, the spelling bee event. And Dan, your character is bizarre. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to, to uh, politely correct you. It's Fogler. It's oh, oh, I'm sorry. Fogler. Listen, it's been haunting me my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I called you like the coffee maker. Yes. Folger, that's right. uh, don't worry about it. Um, Barfy, Barfay is William bizarre. William Barfay, yes. William Barfay. Morris Barfay. Um, his real name is Barfy, but he tries to, to hide it behind an accent, a goo. And um, <laughs> he is super smart, uber nerd. Um, that kid that you knew in school that was drowning in his own mucus and, <laughs> and, and sinus troubles, <laughs> and but was um, incredibly intelligent, and because was often picked on all the time by bullies and, and whatnot, that he chose his little places to um, you know, be a be a snob about certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and spelling is one of them. I think spelling was like a to answer the second question, uh, mm -hmm. it was a secondary thing for him. Uh, yes, it's something that he excelled at, but his main thing was science. Right. And uh, it was, spelling became incredibly important because last year he got knocked out because of his, one of his illnesses knocked him out. So he's got a, he's got a huge, uh, Something to prove. Mm. Yeah. And he's got some, the magic foot, the amazing. Ma he spells with his <laughs> yes, foot. Yes, that's another way of him, you know, boasting about his. It's it's a very big way of spelling. You know, a lot of these kids, um, when we were when we were figuring out our uh, our characters, when we were creating our characters, um, we were watching the National Spelling Bee, mm. and uh, there were uh, all these kids had these these little specific things that they did. Um, Celia's character. You know, she covers her mouth. A lot of kids do that as a technique. They they say the words to themselves, and and a lot of kids uh, will write on the back of their placards. Schwartz and Group in the air writes on her arm, mm -hmm. so she can see the word. And this kid was like, "I'm going to show off, so I'm going to write incredibly with my my foot." So this is a real kid you were watching. Do this. No, this oh, was no. my take. This I was, was like, your take. My, on these. my kid is going to be a show off. That's what I said. So right. the kid that I create is going to be. A big show off because well, you are were one of the original yeah. actors in the who created this for a little improvisational group. Is yeah, it's the farm, uh, which was um, uh, by um, the leader was Rebecca Feldman, uh -huh. and she would get her friends together. I've known Rebecca for a long, long time, and uh, she would have these little projects, and 
this was one of his little projects that we did. Uh, we, it was called Crepuscule at the time, Crepuscule. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was <clears throat> at the Theatorium, downtown in the middle of nowhere. And this little thing uh, where it was just friends getting together to make people laugh has snowballed into this. Well, so I, we should also say that William Barfait does not have a terribly chic goatee, but as we're no, taking he this... <laughs> he's <right>. not, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, he's supposed, what's he supposed to be, 12 years old? <laughs> how, how old is he, are, you supposed, are you supposed to be? He's 12. 12 yeah, yeah um, you're all, what, the ages are all, what? 12, 11, 11, 10. 12, 11, yeah, 11, yeah, but you're on yeah. break right now, so... What, I, right, exactly. what I admired about your performance is that, and it's actually, frankly, one of the things I kind of feared going in to see the show is that you can kind of um, play in these misfit characters. They can uh, be cruelly made fun of, mm -hmm. condescended to in some way. Uh, but you never do. I mean, you're, they are sort of lovable in the end. Was this something that you that was very important, I think, struggled with not to do to them? I, I think important for all of us, and when James Lapine got involved, even more so, to make these kids real people mm -hmm. um, mm. and to bring out the spirit of being a kid and not necessarily adults acting like children. Um, it's a very hard distinction to make because it is easy to go into that caricature um, place with with these with these eccentric kids, and I, I feel, for me, like especially with my my um, association with the show, having started off in last February in a workshop and then doing a production of it in the Berkshires last summer, um, I think it started off very caricaturish and then kind of worked from the outside in and found the reality of the character just here and, you know, with James's help and in the New York production. But it's been very important for us to all base our, our characters in reality mm -hmm. and not, not make well, you fun don't, of yeah, them. You don't, want the, you don't want the audience really to, you want the audience to laugh at these kids, but not to be feeling any sense of ridicule. For Never them. Mm -hmm. Or treat the audience, treating the kids the way they, those kids would be treated in their normal setting in high school. Mm -hmm. There's also something so sort of liberating about playing a kid because kids have different filters of what is acceptable mm -hmm. or um, you're there, just in middle school I feel like you're starting to hone you know those little people that sit on the side of your heads and say what is acceptable or what is not and how to you know act in certain situations and they're still sort of navigating their way through that so there is that what comes with that is this there's a lot of vulnerability mm -hmm. that you get to sort of tap into as an actor which is always really nice and and this idea that, that you're there sort of wide open without all of that baggage, I think that we kind of tend to acquire mm -hmm. as adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think this show is a, <clears throat> it's a microcosm of, of the trials and tribulations that we all go through every day in our own lives. But it's at its, the, it's there aren't the, the levels are, the, <laughs> the, the, the layers are, the are, worst. are its rawest, yeah. Yeah. It's the worst. It's its rawest form. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you're getting a lot of uh, kids in to see the, kids in to see the show? Have you had actual spelling bee champions come to see the show? Yeah, we, we did. Some, yeah, we had a... That kid from Spellbound Yeah, the kid from Spellbound. Right. Oh, which one? The band, 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 band. Oh, the one who bounces oh, off the uh, walls of his bedroom? Yeah, yes. yeah he came to the show and they I'm, wanted to get him on stage no. and we nixed that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting doing it for kids and because we have had a few audiences that have been primarily kids and they do react differently than the adults. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's because part of me would think it's some of the humor is very sophisticated, mm -hmm. which would make me think that the kids would not necessarily relate. But they had a TDF group they came. They get all of they it. They do. And they wrote us letters, actually, about mm -hmm. what characters they identified with and why they enjoyed, you know, the performances. It was pretty great. I mean, mm -hmm. they definitely, I feel, I felt like they were, they, they were with it. us. They get it. They they get it on a deeper level sometimes. Well, they're, they're in it every day. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're they're going to middle there school a, and living this way. There was a time when we did it in the Berkshires, and we had um, a lot of kids there, and we all all the guest spellers were children, the ages that we were actually playing. Um, they were like. 10, 11, 12 year olds, and it was very weird <laughs> because here they are living the reality, and we're trying to like tap right. into what they, what we were, they we were live adults every day. trying very hard to be yeah. kids, and they were kids trying so hard, hard to be adults. adults. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, uh, you succeed in being kids and uh, giving a terrific show at the Circle and Square, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It is dope. It is wonderful. Terrific show. Don't miss it. Wonderful cast. And thank you all for being our guest tonight Celia, Jesse, and Dan. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
Thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Friedrich Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. Playbill Online is the official website of Theatre Talk and the home of the Playbill Club, providing information and opportunities for theatre lovers. Welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night. Mm -hmm.